Honorable Secretary IT and Telecom, Mr. Rizwan Rashid Khan, Worthy Chairman PTA, Honorable Members of Pakistan Telecommunication Authority, Distinguished Guests from Asia Pacific Region, Respected Representatives from Government, Industry, Civil Society, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of Government of Pakistan and Pakistan Telecommunication Authority, we welcome you all to the opening ceremony of 6th Asia Pacific Regulators Roundtable Conference on 18th and 19th July 2016, followed by three days international training program from 20th July to 22nd July. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Government of Pakistan is grateful for the collaboration extended by ITU towards the holding of this conference. And indeed, it's an honor for Pakistan that PTA has been selected by ITU to provide training to the participants from the member countries. PTA is grateful to all the distinguished guests, excellencies, speakers, experts, and all the participants of this conference for their time and energy extended in this cause. To formally start the ceremony, I now request Engineer Etishamullah Shah for a citation from Holy Quran.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this regulator's roundtable is the sixth edition of the Asia Pacific Regions Initiative to organize an annual roundtable to provide ICT regulators in the sector with a platform that fosters dynamic and strategic discussions as well as sharing of information, relevant experiences and practices and to conclusively debate on possible solutions and opportunities for the potential collaboration to address the emerging regulatory issues and challenges. I shall now request worthy Chairman PTA, Dr. Sayed Ismail Shah, to give his welcome remarks. Bismillah rahman rahim Excellency Mr. Haolin Zhao, Secretary General, International Telecommunication Union, Minister of State for Information Technology and Telecommunication, Madam Manusha Rahman Khan, Secretary Minister of IT, Rizwan Bashir Khan, Regional Director, ITU, Mr. Ayame Koryoki, Mr. Samir Sharma, Senior Advisor, ITU Regional Office, Chairman, Members, Director General, Distinguished Guests from Asia Pacific, in specially, we would like to welcome the Chairman from Afghan Telecommunication Regulatory Authority and Chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, the Director General from China, Commissioner from Indonesia, and High Official from all other countries like Samoa, Cambodia, Nepal, Bangladesh, and all the countries who are present in here. We would also like to extend our warm welcome to our colleagues here, Executive Director, FAB, CEOs, Director General, SCO, uh, high officials of the telecom companies here, guests from the government, ministries, and colleagues from PTA. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to welcome you to this opening ceremony of the 6th Regulators Roundtable Conference. It will be followed by a three-day international training program. We are very, very thankful to ITU and the member countries for their trust in us by providing an exciting opportunity to host the regulatory roundtable in Pakistan for the first time. We are very pleased to have you all here and look forward to your valuable participation in the event. We greatly appreciate the role of ITU in making this platform available for the regulators of the ICT sector. This provides not, an, not only an opportunity to discuss issues, but will also look, look into some solutions that are there to the problems that we as uh, APT countries are facing. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, the theme of this year's Regulatory Roundtable Conference is Collaborative Regulations for Smart Digital Societies. As we are moving into the new technologies, they are opening up endless possibilities for our societies, governments and individuals. We can exploit the potential of these advancements for the benefit of our citizens. However, this places a greater responsibility on the regulators also because we are not only now a regulator of the telecom sector where we regulate our licensees, but we have to look into the broader issues of ICTs. That's why that we are now moving into the fifth generation of regulation from the fourth generation which were based on integrated regulations and we are moving into collaborative regulations. This offer challenges, but I think the opportunities are much more than the challenges that we face. In this regulatory roundtable, we are going to talk about the emerging trends in collaborative regulations. We are going to talk about getting the right balance, which is actually the most difficult thing and the challenges where we can actually maximize the opportunities, especially in data-driven, connected world. One of the issues that we are going to discuss during these two days is the over-the-top services and its multi-facet uh, impacts. We are also going to look at the technologies and how the regulators can actually facilitate them 
so that we have the latest technologies available for the citizens of our countries and the incentives to contribute to the sector and to the overall development of the nation. At the end of the regulatory roundtable, we will have an outcome document that will be shared with all. We feel that there is a greater need for cooperation in our countries, in the region, because we are not only creating information societies in our own countries, but we need to have regional information societies that are connected with the world's information society. For this, actually, I would like to propose an exchange program of human resource between professional organizations and regulatory bodies within the region. And PTA is ready to be part of any such initiative and would welcome anyone who would like to send their professionals to PTA and we'll also be willing to send our professionals to your organization to spend some time with you. The vision of our government is that for a vibrant telecom market with affordable access to services for consumers. And I think this is fully aligned with the vision of ITU as all of us have benefited from the principles and standards like the IMT Advanced, IMT 2020, most uh, popularly known as 3G, 4G and 5G technology set by ITU and by providing meaningful input into all other areas. Finally, I would personally like to thank ITU, all the delegates who have come here and to attend this conference and all the organizations who have extended support to us in holding this successful event. Thank you very much and I hope that your stay in Pakistan will be an enjoyable one. Pakistan, Pahindabad. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Respected audience, in the fast-changing world of telecom and IT technologies, the face of communications has changed drastically. Innovative and next generation technologies have completely transformed the way people used to communicate, do research, conduct marketing, and do many other daily activities. The visionary policies of the government thereby play a crucial role in maximizing such benefits. For this, we look forward to hear from Honorable Minister of State for Information Technology and Telecommunication, Her Excellency Madam Anusha Rahman Khan. Excellency Mr. Holden Zhao, Secretary General ITU, Mr. Rizwan Bashir Khan, Secretary IT and Telecommunications, Chairman PT Dr. Ismail Shah, distinguished guest delegates from Asia Pacific region, regulators, ITU officials, head of organizations, DGSCO, EDFAB, representatives of telecom industry. My guests, dignitaries, excellencies, assalamu alaikum. I'm very happy standing here today because all this time that I've been the minister, it has been my utmost desire to welcome the Secretary General of the ITU here in Pakistan. And today, when Honorable Secretary General is sitting here in Pakistan, I consider it as a huge achievement of the telecom sector. Honorable Secretary General, your presence here demonstrates the confidence that you have in the evolving telecom sector of Pakistan, not just within the region, but marking its presence in the world as a country which is serious about evolving in view of the international best practices. I also know for a fact that the Secretary General had to actually say no to quite a few people on this time whilst he was coming and give a preference to Pakistan. And thank you very much, Secretary General, for doing that. We are really honored. I welcome all the dignitaries here to the Asia Pacific Regulators Roundtable 2016, which is jointly organized by ITU and PTA. Chairman PTA, 
has been extremely involved in getting this conference held here. And congratulations, Honorable Chairman PTA, for getting your dream also accomplished today. I believe that this is a great opportunity where the telecom regulators of the Asia-Pacific region will get together and they will share their variable experiences and undertake strategic decisions to explore the areas of potential collaboration for addressing the upcoming regulatory issues and challenges as what the Chairman PTA just mentioned. Pakistan is passing through a revolution. And this revolution is witnessed every day when the telecom companies get more and more subscribers in the 3G and 4G arena and ICT becomes a way of life for Pakistan. To be able to handle the ongoing challenges and issues as the Chairman PTA says, we all need to sit together on an ongoing basis so that we can make a difference to the people of Pakistan, to the people of this world, using ICT for growth and development. We all understand that the potential of ICT is to innovate and corresponding pace of technological advancement is constantly uh, evaluating and, and we need to review the policies all the time and we need to look into the regulatory paradigms which control the frameworks. Since ICTs are now considered as one of the key enablers for development, as well as catalysts for transformation of a number of other economic sectors as well, we as policymakers and regulators should be forthcoming in addressing upcoming issues to ensure availability of latest technologies with appropriate regulatory interventions so that markets can flourish and end users get benefit in terms of quality and affordable services. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Pakistan fully realizes the potential of ICTs, and to, which is to be used to spur socio-economic growth. We're completely cognizant of the fact that digital Pakistan is the only way forward. And we have therefore positioned this agenda as one of the key priority items. We are pursuing with a vision of accelerated digitization to transform Pakistan into a knowledge-based economy. Our focus remains on ubiquitous development of ICT infrastructure across the country, with special emphasis on serving marginalized segments of the society and bridging the digital divide. For me, working for an overall cause and to bring the girls and women into the mainstream for using ICTs is at the heart of our agenda. We believe in connectivity and inclu inclusiveness for all and broadband and internet proliferation is our policy priority. Honorable Secretary General, uh, you would be very pleased to hear that the, with the introduction of mobile broadband 3G, 4G LTE services since November to 2014, when the work actually started, around 30 million broadband subscriptions have been realized. And broadband penetration has rose from less than 3% when I became the minister, has exceeded beyond 18% in a short span of two years, taking our growth rate of mobile broadband penetration ahead of several countries in the region. I'm very proud to attribute the success to app policies and appropriate regulatory interventions and of course the support and cooperation of the industry and the will of the divine that Pakistan needs and deserves to be the best. <laughs> Considering the digital divide between the rural and urban areas, government through a viable and thriving public-private partnership mechanisms under the Universal Service Fund has undertaken various projects which have resulted in extensive development of fiber optic cable, provisioning of broadband services to educational institutions and communities, and access to telephone services including 3G in the most far-flung areas of Pakistan. We have several projects rolling in the underserved, unserved areas, particularly in Mastong, Loralai, Shangla, Zob, Sippi, Kalat, and more. And these projects are being rolled to connect those areas where there was no visibility of any telecom services, never mind 3G, 4G services, which they will have within the next years. 
So these initiatives implemented through subsidies of tens of billions of rupees under the PPP model have collectively taken coverage of ICT services to 90% population of Pakistan. By 2018 January, Universal Service Fund would have started almost all the projects which would complete connectivity to these MOSAs which are defined by USF as underserved and unserved. Ladies and gentlemen, keeping in line with the requirements of the modern key ICT sector indicators, we believe that in light touch regulations and fair competition in the market. Recently launched Pakistan Telecommunication Policy 2015 is very categoric when it comes to market mechanisms and competition. Several new elements like treatment of OTTs, com uh, comprehending convergence, etc., have also been identified as potential issues which need regulatory treatment. We understand that there are no easy answers at this point in time. But indeed, while collaborating and with cooperation, we can devise suitable treatment to such issues. As Chairman PTA just mentioned, that the traditional regulatory roles have now diminished. The telecom regulators are emerging as also looking at ICT matters. ICT as a whole and OTT, all these mechanisms are now being discussed at the Ministry of IT and PTA with, with all the stakeholders to see how we can have effective mechanisms so that we move forward without disturbing the communications but also ensuring that we get the right mechanism written down so that we all follow those procedures and Pakistan can perhaps be a leading country in also devising the OTT policy framework. The, our policy has specifically focused on widespread availability of affordable broadband services provided over fixed or mobile networks with characteristics that support contemporary and new digital applications and content. To achieve this goal, facilitative measures for physical infrastructure development including a backbone fiber optic network and access network has been prescribed. It is also pledged that allocation and assignment of spectrum will continue to maximize social and economic benefits derived from the use of this scarce resource and spectrum will be re released in a timely manner. I would like to compliment Telenor who have just recently signed last week their uh, license agreement for the spectrum and uh, we would very soon be seeing now Telenor also emerging as a 4G service provider in the country. Spectrum sharing and trading has been allowed through this policy to ensure efficient use of spectrum. The Pakistan Telecom Authority has also been interested to review the existing licensing regime in order to increase efficiency in the market. So Honorable Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving towards Internet of Things, digital smart cities, virtualization in clouds, big data, which are probably the next landmarks after Internet and ICT revolution. To make this universal reality, it is important that our policies should reflect measures to overcome digital divide, availability of spectrum, infrastructure deployment, content and application development. I think as a follow-up to these policies, regulators have a crucial role to play in terms of protecting consumer rights, privacy, affordability and quality of service with respect to above-mentioned technologies. From industry point of view, regulatory frameworks should provide clarity, predictability and certainty to induce confidence in the market and in the operators. We need to consider whole ecosystem of ICTs from demand to supply side. While realigning our policy and regulatory frameworks to make progress towards sustainable development goals. To help nations achieve the targets set in the SDGs, the role of the ICT sector as a whole needs to evolve from that of uh, industry policemen, which in case is this regulator, to a partner, which is the government, to enable the combined resources of the government and the industry to tap the unconventional sources of service innovation, particularly the entrepreneur talent of the youth. SDGs are a key enablers and we all need to work together to achieve the sustainable development goals. And this in activity that we are undertaking here today, and I have been engaged uh, with UNICEF and other, plat other sister agencies, uh, Secretary General Helen Zhao has been very active 
in education and health to bring together the collaboration between the IT and different sister agencies of the UN so that we can achieve the sustainable development goals within the demand of the time. We in our right have set out our sights on supporting the entrepreneurship spirit but new business models and innovative plans need to evolve with the public, private or industry regulator collaboration to ensure sustain sustainability of the resulting initiatives. Similarly, there needs to be consistent focus on achievement of the inclusive development of the disadvantaged segments of the societies, particularly women and people with special needs. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary General ITU, I would once again like to thank the Secretary General ITU for gracing the occasion <laughs> With this, with this esteemed presence. I would also like to thank regional officers of the ITU for its support to host this event. I would also like to congratulate my team at the Ministry of IT and Pakistan Telecom Authority for making arrangements and preparations for this regulatory roundtable. This, for me, is the first of many ITU conferences to come, Secretary General ITU. I wish you all successful and fruitful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. Ladies and gentlemen, ITU is unique among the UN agencies in having both public and private sector membership. ITU is committed to connecting all the world's people, wherever they live and whatever their means. Through their work, they protect and support everyone's fundamental right to communicate. With the help of global membership, ITU brings the benefit of modern communication technologies to people everywhere in an efficient, safe, easy, and affordable manner. In an increasingly interconnected world, ITU is a single global organization embracing all the players in this dynamic and fast-growing sector. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Holland Zhao at this forum, who was elected as the Secretary General ITU in October 2014. Mr. Zhao has worked extensively with the ITU community carrying out several leadership roles from 2007 to 2014. He served as ITU's Deputy Secretary General where he effectively assisted the ITU Secretary General in close cooperation with other elected officials of the Union. Prior to this, Mr. Zhao served in the elected role of Director of ITU's Telecommunications Standardization Bureau from 1999 to 2006. During his two terms of office, he spearheaded the introduction of new efficiency measures to improve the ITU standards while strengthening the promotion of ITU leadership in global ICT standards. I shall now request His Excellency Mr. Holland Zhao, Secretary General ITU, for his keynote address. Thank you very much, Madam. Remind me my long service in ITU, but I'm still relatively young. Her Excellency, Mrs. Anusha Rahman Khan, Minister of State of Information Technology and Telecommunication. Dr. Syed Ismail Shah, Chairman of Pakistan Telecommunication Authority. Honorable Chairman, Board Members, Head of regulatory authorities and the senior policy makers from the members of Asia Pacific region, distinguished delegates, colleagues, ladies, and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great pleasure and a privilege for me to be here with you in this beautiful city, Islamabad, today, at the Asia Pacific regulators roundtable jointly organized by the Pakistan Telecommunication Authority and the International Telecommunication Union with support from the Department of Communications and the Arts, the Government of Australia. The Honorable Minister just told me that she did not normally read the text, but I normally read my text. But I cut my text before I come to the stage, normally by at least one third. And today, you know, I found that uh, I may also have to, to do something, you know, not read my text. But as this esteemed roundtable, we are greatly honored 
by the presence of high-level regulatory and policy decision makers from the members of the region and beyond. I thank you all for your personal presence despite your very busy schedule. On behalf of ITU, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to Her Excellency, Madam Anusha Rahman Khan, Minister of State of Information Technology and Telecommunications, and Dr. Syed Ismail Shah, Chairman, Pakistan Telecommunication Authority, for hosting this very important roundtable and for the kind hospitality extended to us since our arrival. <laughs> Madam Minister just mentioned that she is very pleased to see me here. But I can tell you that she extended her invitation to me as early as in 2014 when she came to IT activities to organize receptions to participate at WTDC 2014. And when she learned that uh, I had never been to Pakistan, she said, no, you have to come. So I'd like to invite you to Pakistan. I told her there is one condition, that if I will be elected, because at that moment I was a candidate for six general for ITU. I promised her that if I'm elected, I will come with you, with you to visit your country. She said, no, 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 that's no problem. You will be elected. We support you. So she loyally promoted my candidate everywhere so that I could come to Pakistan as a Secretary General of ITU. Now that is, uh, so Minister gave us a lot of uh, information about the achievement during the last two years after she took uh, the post, but she missed one important one. She wants to hear from me which one. Let me tell you. And at that moment, at WTDC, she told me that she would like to bring Pakistan back to the IT Council. I, Pakistan was the IT Council for some years, quite a long time, but unfortunately, before 2014, Pakistan was not luckily elected as a member of the council. She said, uh, I would like to see Pakistan back to IT council. IT has 193 member states, and we have 48 members elected by IT family as council members. And the council has to work in between the Potential Conference for four years to take care of uh, ITU's administrative fair and uh, strategic uh, issues during those four years. And the competition is very tough. I must say that Pakistan started uh, its campaign a little bit late, and many countries already heavily lobbied for their membership. But she said, no, I would like to see Pakistan be elected as a in the potential conference 2014. And she got it. Pakistan now is back to IQ as a member, member state of the council. So, Madam, I again take this opportunity to express my high congratulations to your very efficient effort. And this morning she asked me what about my impression about Islamabad, about Pakistan, because she over the last two years, repeatedly told me that it's a beautiful city of our capital, you know, they're very calm, and, um, you know, that uh, is uh, under development. Yes, indeed, I got a uh, very good impression yesterday that uh, this is a very beautiful city, very green, green city, very peaceful. I don't see any people on the street uh, with a panic. Uh, you know, feelings like uh, we heard from the media that uh, this is uh, the place uh, you know, full of risk. And it's uh, safe, but also it's quite a uh, happy city. Because last night uh, when I came to this room, it was a room for the marriage 
But it's not the only room in this, in this hotel. You have many rooms in this hotel. And almost every room is occupied by marriage. <laughs> it's not the one man married a lot. It's the marriage of each family. So I got a place that's a happy, happy city. So we take this uh, happy atmosphere from uh, the marriage to continue our roundtable discussions over the next two days. So I see it's a very wonderful uh, place for us to have this uh, roundtable here. And Madam Minister also mentioned that uh, this is a very special day. Yes, indeed. Today, 18th of July, I was requested by several other events, including the Africa Summit, which started today in Kigali, the capital of Rwanda. And the President of Rwanda is a very good friend of ITU, and his champion, named by the Africa Union as champion of ICT for Africa, and she worked over the last six years with ITU to promote ICT everywhere. Is our strong supporter of ICT. And he invited me to have uh, so-called observer status to join this Africa Union Summit. And also to join him with the uh, president for lunch today, two hours. It's a great honor. But I told the president that since I already committed myself with my friend from Pakistan, to have this meeting. I've never been to Pakistan. And if he could kindly allow me to come, and he understood the situation, then he kindly said yes. <laughs> we will not force you to come here. <laughs> and this afternoon, there is another event which will be held in Nairobi, Kenya. My UN colleague from Ongta invited me to join his high level panel discussions together with some ministers and the president of Africa to talk about ICT for digital economy. Again, I told him, since I committed with my friend from Pakistan, you know, I very much regret I could not join you because there's no way for me to come over to Nairobi to join you this afternoon. So our minister is very happy. I'm very happy yeah, because if I will not have this opportunity, I may not uh, be able to come later this year, and uh, I may not have chance uh, early enough and at the beginning of next year. So I'm very, very happy to join our minister to come to this round table here at the end of this <laughs> So let me also take this opportunity to add our gratitude to all those who contributed to our previous host of this roundtable. I understand that from 2011 we started this event. This event was initiated by our members from the region. But the first event was hosted by Australia as well as they host another one, 2014. Then we had uh, 2011, hosted by our friend from India, Try. And uh, then Korea, hosted in 2013. And Malaysia, hosted our event last year. So let me take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to all those private hosts and of course, also gratitude to all those participants who engaged with these activities since 2011. So ladies and gentlemen, this regulatory roundtable for Asia Pacific 2016 is of course very particular in the sense that it's the first symposium in the region since the United Nations adopted Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Otherwise, it's referred to as the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. ICTs are the foundation upon which economic and social development
can grow. ICTs have incredible potential to improve development outcomes in both the developing and the developing world. All three pillars of sustainable development, economic development, social inclusion, and environmental protection need ICT as key catalysts. And ICTs will be absolutely crucial for achieving the SDGs. It is widely appreciated that the Asia-Pacific region has undergone tremendous changes in ICT development over the last decade and is becoming the largest and the most dynamic ICT development market in the world and the most dynamic economic region of the world. However, this region with the highest population in the region is also recognized to have many challenges. And we just heard from our Minister of those situations in the past and her achievement over the last two years and her plan for the future. And in fact, she briefed me when she visited Geneva during the visits at the beginning of May. And she also you know, give us a very good uh, support to join us at a jointly organized uh, event between WHO and ITU for the joint uh, project. And she came to our council meeting on the 25th of May. So over those occasions, she gave me briefings of what happened uh, in Pakistan. And uh, it's her dream by 2020 the current situation should be dramatically changed and the Pakistan will be fully interconnected with the modern technologies to all the people and the villages. So I take this opportunity to again once more express my confidence that our region, Pakistan, will be able to make progress. And this uh, round table will uh, give us opportunities to foster the dynamic and strategic discussions, as well as uh, sharing of information and relevant experiences and practices, and to conclusively debate on possible solutions and opportunities for potential collaboration to address emerging regulatory issues and the challenges to take measures and respond effectively to the new challenges brought about by the digital society, which in turn promotes that the people in the region benefit from the opportunities brought about by the digital economy in an informed, responsive, and safe manner. Ladies and gentlemen, Digital opportunities to fully materialize in today's increasingly complex environment, an adaptive, consultative, and innovative approach to regulations is more than ever required. Indeed, the same collaborative regulation for smart digital societies is so timely and important since effective and relevant ICT regulations whether on big data, spectrum, OTT, and other ICT issues, which are session themes of this roundtable, always have a cross sectorial impact that is essential to promoting growth of economies, industries, societies, and human development in countries. Relatively, as ICTs are falling into other sectors of the economy, regulators no longer are confined within their traditional rules and finding themselves having expanded rules and uh, accordingly responsibilities. Getting them involved into sectors where there is a need to work, coordinate and collaborate with other sectorial regulators. 
Most importantly, there is a need to hold an inclusive dialogue across the sectors so that ICTs can contribute in achieving the SDGs. Now, it's a challenge to our regulators, but also to all of us. In the United Nations, we try to work with others as well. Now, as I mentioned, we worked with uh, UNESCO to organize uh, ICT uh, for development under the name of uh, Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. And we started this uh, project uh, since 2010, so over six years, and quite a uh, success. But still, as the Minister just mentioned, that uh, we are very much focusing on the ICT for education. And uh, March this year, I visited Tonga. It's a very short visit. I do not have time to see the schools as the time is very short. But when I was there, I requested if I could have chance to see look at schools. And fortunately, they organized my visit to two schools. One is the high college, where the current Minister of Communication and also Deputy Prime Minister studied before. This is a school of 1,400 students, more than 1,000. Uh, girls' students. That is the first uh, school, public school I see. The girls are such a number. I ask them whether this is a girls' school or you know, that, why you have such high level uh, you know, uh, schools, girls rather than school boys. They said, no, it's not uh, particularly reserved for girls. This is uh, for public you know, competitions, and, which means that in Tonga, the girls work much harder than the boys. But this school, 1,400, there was no internet connection, no Wi-Fi. But later I visited another school. That school is church school, has 150 years history. And in fact, June, just last June, June this year, they celebrated their 150th anniversary. This school has around 2,000 students. And uh, our current uh, Prime Minister studied there. There was no internet uh, connection. There are some limited uh, teaching courses. For example, in the high college, I visited that uh, laboratory. We have around uh, two dozens of uh, used computers donated by the parents of uh, school children. So this kind of uh, situation is quite serious. And in many developing countries, we have similar situation. And also, we try to work with uh, WHO for ICT for public health. And recently, I talked with uh, UNIDO and the UN Women to see if we can jointly launch a project to support our women and girls for ICT. And I also will start our contact with FAO to see if we could have a joint project to support the food security and uh, e-agriculture. I'm very pleased to note that uh, this morning I received uh, briefings from UN residential coordinator. And he told me that uh, here recently we had a visit uh, from the Queen of uh, Dutch here and uh, during her visit we talked a lot about the ICT development and there is a very good cooperation between our Tereno and uh, Vemacom you know, with uh, UN agencies. Of course I think that I also noted that it is a zone as uh, China Mobile uh, sponsored uh, operators. I learned that uh, from General Malik, the former chairman of uh, PTA that uh, China Mobile came to invest uh, in Pakistan. At that moment, he told me that uh, that the network was the smallest one. It's about one million people. Today, I was uh, very pleased to see that uh, Zone got uh, the third position, moved uh, from the bottom to the third position. So all these uh, telecom operators seems to be uh, quite uh, successful and enjoying the 
environment in Pakistan to have their development. And that's great. So this kind of uh, collaborations, this kind of uh, work, I think that uh, should be continued. So I'm certain that uh, the next two days we will have exciting networking activities as well as discussions and a debate on current and emerging ICT policy and the regulatory topics, issues and challenges. I'm very positive that all this will result in productive and uh, concrete outcomes which are very important input to ITU for our future plan and we count on you. Ladies and gentlemen, before I close, let me just uh, remind you that uh, ITU has uh, ITU Telecom World 2016, which will be held in Bangkok from 14th to 17th of November. And uh, ITU Reform ITU Telecom platform, moving from traditional operators focused expression of their technologies and the services, now to moving to support ICT small medium sized entrepreneurs. And we are very pleased that uh, the first uh, reform got a very good uh, result last year. And we had our telecom 2015 here in is uh, Hungary, October last year. And uh, it's quite successful. And uh, this year we expect uh, more participants, more SMEs to join us. I'm very pleased that uh, our minister supported our activities and uh, we are actively participated at this uh, telecom with uh, SMEs from uh, Pakistan to join us. Because at the international level, we found that uh, there is a missing link, that uh, there is no international platform for government to come together with the SMEs to share their experiences, share their challenges, share their opportunities, even perhaps a form of partnership. And IT would like to add this value, value to this important part of our industry by offering this uh, platform. So I'm very grateful to the active participation from Pakistan and uh, look forward for your uh, <coughs> coming to Bangkok. And I also like to take this opportunity to, to advise you that uh, it's the first time and maybe might be the only time within the next few years that the 13th of November, just the day before the telecom event, I will organize important consultation with our academy members of IT. IT opens its door to accept uh, universities, institutes as our academy members since 2011. Today we have 128 members of uh, academy, including universities from developed countries and developed countries. We would like to have uh, good consultation with them to see how can we strengthen this cooperation. We might create a technical magazine after this consultation. We would like to also encourage them to play more active roles in ITU to have a good contact with business or family. So I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to come to Bangkok from the 13th of November, if you can. Otherwise, the 14th of November, up to the 17th of November, is a big event for us to welcome you there. So finally, I wish us all an engaging and productive discussions and a successful Round table. So as I mentioned, you know, I normally used to read my text because I cut my text before I can. But if I do not read my text, it may take a much more, much longer time. I hope it's not very boring to you. I wish you very successful. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> this brings us to the end of the inaugural session. I will now request the Honorable Secretary General, Honorable Minister, and all the other respected ITU delegates for a group photo outside. After that, we will have a short coffee break, and the respected ITU delegates are requested to please assemble in the Kekisha Hall No. 1 of Serena for the first session of the Regulators Roundtable. PT officers are available to guide you in this regard. Thank you.
If you sail due south from Kanachi, you would not see any land till you reach the South Pole. Travel northwards, and you would witness some of the most spectacular scenery, culture, and people that you